around. It might be the only Visual Force presentation you see. Uh, my name is Mike Sen. I've been a Visual Force platform developer for the past three years. And today I'm going to be showing you a new pilot component that we have within Visual Force called Live Controller. Live Controller is your hook to let your Visual Force pages sync with the data that's in the Salesforce database. Uh, before we get started, a lot of what I'm showing here today is in Pilot, so based your purchasing decisions on what is generally available. This is kind of a preview component. It's not generally available yet. I do have some GA stuff I'll talk about in the last part of the session, but you know, don't buy anything that's not available yet. OK, so today I'm going to be talking about a page out of sync problem. This is a problem that a lot of people end up experiencing when they have Visual Force content inside of their Lightning UI. And so they're showing Visual Force and Lightning at the same time. And sometimes the data kind of gets out of sync. I've got a couple of demos about Live Controller and how Live Controller works. I'm going to be spending a little bit of time talking about Lightning data services and how Live Controller synchronizes data with the rest of Lightning using LDS. And then I have some, some, something to talk about with a Visual Force view state and about how Live Controller impacts the view state of Visual Force pages and kind of modernizes VS. So first of all, the page out of sync problem. Uh, if you're, as you're developing apps within Salesforce, you're using Visual Force and you're using Lightning components and using standard components and Lightning App Builder and all sorts of different technologies, UI technologies. And sometimes those UI technologies don't agree with each other. So you'll have Visual Force content and Lightning content on the same page. Like here, we've got an employee count in the record detail component that says 700. And we've got a Visual Force page that says 680 employees. So we're looking at incorrect data. We're not sure which is the incorrect data, but we know that some of that data is incorrect because it's stale or it's out of date or something like that. And so this situation can happen anytime that you've got deep back-end processes like Apex triggers or roll-up summary fields, some kind of situation where you've got a UI like Visual Force or Lightning that saves to the back-end, and then that data gets further processed in the back-end. But for some reason, the connection back to the UI is uh, corrupt, or you know that connection is not made. And so you don't end up seeing the correct data in the UI until you refresh your browser screen. And so that's a big problem. But Live Controller is here to save the day. So Live Controller is a new pilot component that we're putting in that allows your Visual Force pages to subscribe to the records that are being viewed in the Visual Force page. So that anytime those records update, change data capture and lightning data services notify the Visual Force page that, oh, your data is out of date. You need to refresh. You need to update the data that you're showing. Live Controller uses a technology called re-render. Re-render is on lots of Visual Force components, so you may be familiar with re-render already. And Live Controller works alongside Lightning components so that you've got Lightning components and Visual Force on the same browser tab, and they're always going to be showing the same data. So regardless of what UI or what backend process updates the Salesforce record, the UI that you are looking at stays in sync, and it's always showing the right data. And the best part is, to use Live Controller, you just have to add one line of code to your Visual Force page. We can't make it easier than that. So as a demo, let me show Live Controller and full page re-render. So in my demo today, uh, anytime I'm showing Visual Force, it's going to have this kind of dashed orange line. And so that way, you know that it's Visual Force. And so on this page right here, I've got a donations app. I've got a dashed orange line. So we're looking at Visual Force, and we're also looking at Lightning. And we're showing the same data in VS and in Lightning. And so this is definitely going to be a situation where we have this kind of page out of sync problem. And so on this app here, I've got green and yellow and no red pins yet because those would map to low and medium and high priority sites. But I don't have any high priority sites. Well, what do you know? I just got a phone call, and I've got some high priority sites. So let me update those. And so I expect that when I hit Save on this update here, that the page would refresh and that I would have some red pins. But that doesn't happen. I've got data that's out of sync now, and so I'm seeing the incorrect data. Of course, if I go and refresh the entire browser tab, then I start seeing those red pins. And that's what we wanted. But we had that bug there for a second where we were seeing old data. So let's see what we can do to liven up this Visual Force page and make it a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is edit the Visual Force page. And I'm going to put Live Controller back into the page because it was just commented out. I'll put Live Controller into the page and save it. 
And then when I go back to the page, refresh, pick up that change. So we've got these red pins. Let's try to get rid of them. Let me update that data again so that the red pins go away because we don't need them anymore. And when I save, you see that the Visual Force page automatically updated. And now I'm seeing completely in sync data between VF and between Lightning. And that's fantastic. The problem is solved. And so wasn't Live Controller amazing? <laughs> All right. So let me show you. Uh, the, let's talk a little bit about how Live Controller works a little bit more. Um, I'm going to be showing this kind of flow chart, and I'll kind of walk you through the flow chart. So we're going to start over here on the lower right corner where we have the Salesforce back end. Anytime data is committed into the Salesforce database, we have the opportunity to run Apex triggers and kind of database hooks. And so after that trigger runs, after the Salesforce data uh, is updated, after the database is updated, we publish that data over the Salesforce streaming API. And so you'll hear a lot about change data capture and the streaming API and a lot of other presentations. Live controller is going to be a hook into the streaming API within Visual Force pages. And so the streaming API says, oh, look, uh, this record was updated. There are a number of people who are interested in that record. They're subscribed to that record. They're watching that record. And so I'm going to push it into that browser right there. So you have, you've got your Lightning Experience browser there. And with a number of components on the page, remember we had Lightning components on the page, we had VF components on the page, but Lightning Data Services controls the data for all of them. It controls the data fetching for all of them. And so the LDS says, OK, well, which specific components were interested in this record? And says, it says oh, the Visual Force page we're looking at, you know, we've got a save for this record. And the Visual Force page was interested in it. So let me go notify the Visual Force page. Your data is out of date now. You need to go update. And so it sends a record invalidation into the Visual Force page. And then Visual Force takes that record invalidation and uses a re-render flow that you're going to be very, very familiar with uh, to dynamically update the DOM on the page, the document on the page. And so all of this comes built in with Live Controller, but it's important to understand how it works, that it runs based on database hooks. And so anytime anything gets updated in the database, Live Controller and Change Data Capture kind of dynamically update your browser screen. And LDS is the mechanism that keeps your entire browser in sync, so that if any part of your browser, if any component on the browser screen sees an update to the data, everything on your, on your browser tab is going to get that update. So here's Lightning Data Services. Uh, like I said, Lightning Data Services is kind of the aggregation of all of the data in our, on your browser tab. It's used by a ton of different components on your UI. Uh, it's used by any built-in Lightning components, like your related list component, or the record detail component, or the list view manager component, like we were showing. Uh, if you have custom Aura components and you're using force record data, then you're actually using LDS, and you didn't even know it. If you're using uh, Lightning Web Components and you have an at wire uh, decorator and the get record or get record UI wire adapters, then you're using LDS, Lightning Data Services. And now if you start using uh, Live Controller, then you're using LDS as well. And so now any time that any update happens on the front end, in whether it's Visual Force or whether it's Lightning, and that update saves back into the back end, no matter what further on the back end updates the data, whether it's Apex triggers or old summaries, that connection is made back into the UI so that the entire UI is refreshed and shows the new data. And we don't see any stale data in some places, but new data in others. So here's re-rendering Visual Force content. Uh, re-render is an attribute that's on a lot of components. But for re-render on Live Controller, it allows you to pick and choose which parts of the page are going to receive these dynamic data updates. Um, because Live Controller can refresh or can re-render parts of the page at any time, it could be kind of confusing to end users if the data that they're, if the parts of the UI that they're working with updates from underneath of them. And so you want to use the re-render attribute on Live Controller to pick and choose, oh, these parts of the page don't need to update, and these parts do. If you have any like client-side rendered components or any like charting components, something like that may not be able to handle re-render. And so you can use the re-render attribute to say, I only want this one particular output panel, or I only want the detail panel to update, or I only need the related list to update, but not other parts of the page. And so the re-render attribute gives you a little bit of control over how Live Controller updates on your page. 
And now I've got another complex demo about uh, view state and live controller. So let's switch over to the demo again. And I'm going to dig into one particular donation site here. And so on this screen, again, I'm showing visual force in this dashed orange border here. And so we've got a visual force chart, and we've got uh, lightning on the left-hand side. And so we're showing the same data twice. This chart is kind of driven by the data that's in this, wa this volunteer's uh, set of fields here. And so let's update these fields. Let's say, oh, uh, actually, some volunteers did not show up, so I'll raise that number and lower this number. And when I save, you see that chart automatically updated. So that chart must already be using Live Controller. And as a matter of fact, it is. So switching over the chart or the, the visual force markup and looking at it, you can see that this page is using Live Controller, but it's using another attribute called the action attribute. So the action attribute is a mechanism for you to write some custom Apex code that runs whenever Live Controller is going to update the page. And so whenever there is out-of-date data on the page, you may want to execute some Apex code in order to update something on your UI to maybe show a notification or to refresh parts of the UI, anything like that. So let's see what the reset me method does for this uh, controller extension. So for this Apex class that we're looking at here, it's, uh, it's a controller extension, and it's keeping track of a couple of private fields. It has a controller field, it has the record that we're looking at, and it has some data that's going to be shown in that pie chart. And the reset me method, what it does is it resets all of that data. And so we were keeping track of the record data in the this.site variable. Well, whenever Live Controller sends us a notification, we need to write the action method that's going to be resetting the data that's on the page. And so that's what we do in the reset method is we reload everything using a little bit of Sockle here. And so this is one way that you can use the action attribute to kind of reload data that you know is going to be out of date. Um, so the, the reason that we have to kind of reset everything uh, that's in the controller extension is because the fields in a controller extension or a custom controller are part of the view state of a page. And so view state is kind of a classical uh, paradigm in server-side rendered programming here, where the view state kind of carries information from your browser screen back to Salesforce, to your browser, back to Salesforce, along some kind of a highway. And that highway is the view state there. And so any fields that we have within our controller extension, like the controller itself, the site, or any data that we're caching to show in the pie chart, that has to be reset when we know that it's out of date. And so that's what we do in the reset method, is we just say, OK, well, we know that the site's out of date, so let's completely uh, refresh it using some Sockle. And we know that the pie data is out of date, so let's set that back to null so that it can be recomputed the next time it's, it's fetched. And so again, uh, I think of view state as kind of a highway of data that's being transported from Salesforce to your browser screen back to Salesforce on the back end. And so anytime you know that a truck is being transported back and forth and you know that it's got out-of-date data, you've got to dump out everything that's on the truck. You've got to clear out the truck and uh, freshen up the data that it was carrying. And so that's what we do with Live Controller and with the action method of Live Controller. I've got a couple more tips here about uh, using Live Controller. Um, it'll be rolling out to orgs in summer 19, but again, this is a pilot program, so you need to contact me or my product manager to get involved in the pilot program. We've got a couple of pilots that we call Live Controller and we call Live Records, and so both of them kind of work in tandem in order to keep all parts of the UI kind of in sync. Um, like I was saying with the re-render attribute, when you're using Live Controller and maybe input fields on the page, uh, sometimes users will be typing in input fields, and you don't want to overwrite the data that they're typing just because a record was updated. And so when you're typing on input fields on a page, and Live Controller detects that a user is typing on an input field, it disables re-rendering until the next browser refresh. And that's to, to help avoid you know, losing any data that the user was in the middle of typing. And so it's important to specify in the re-render attribute only the parts of the page that, that you want to update. Don't include input fields uh, for those updates. 
and it's, a, and it's important to use partial page re-rendering uh, in order to avoid any kind of client-side UI state changes. Like there's a lot of client-side rendered components, like the page block section, that little twisty component that can expand or collapse it. That happens in JavaScript, and so if that gets re-rendered, that component gets reset to its initial state, which may be confusing for end users. So that's another great use case for, for partial re-rendering. And I've got one last thing that I want to talk about. This is completely unrelated, but I was just so excited that I had to put this in, pr in the presentation. You can use Lightning Web Components within Visual Force. Woo! Uh, uh, this is using this exact same technology that allowed you to use Aura Components within Visual Force called Lightning Out, or we called it Lightning Components for VF. Um, and you use it in exactly the same way with a couple of small differences for uh, Lightning Web Components. Uh, to use a, an an Aura component or a, a Lightning Out component within Visual Force, you would create a dependency app, and then you would use the Apex Include Lightning uh, component in order to put it in the page. And so the process there is exactly the same. You create a dependency app, except uh, for Lightning Web Components, normally you specify them in what we call kebab case. There are little dashes that go in between the words in a web component. But you're going to specify it with the classic uh, Aura way to specify the component, where you've got the namespace, colon, and then a camel case version of the name. And so that's a little bit of confusing, but it works. It's fantastic. You can use Lightning Web Components inside of your Visual Force page, and it works great. And so that's completely unrelated to re-render, but I just wanted to put that in there. And that is it. That's the end of the presentation. I'm going to put any code that I wrote up on GitHub, so you can go to that URL and check it out. If you want to get involved in the pilot, come talk to me. I'm MP Sen, or, or Grace is my product manager. So hit us up on Twitter, or come talk to us after the session. And if you love this presentation, there's some other great talks later on today. The, the Ready Visual Force for Lightning experience. And then also build Lightning Web Components Anywhere is going to be happening later today. So go check that out. All right, thank you guys.